Hi, I'm Sunita Rodriguez. I love my kids, my husband, my job, and I love to cook. My mantra is to cook it simple, to cook it good, and to cook it with soul. I've trained as a chef at the Taj Group of Hotels and traveled to food festivals all over the globe. My tactics and tricks hold a secret to cooking up happy times. Join me on Meals on the Run with Sunita. Today, I'm going to make a nice menu for my friends and colleagues from work. I'm going to show you some really stress-free recipes for some exotic and simple food. Mm. I'm going to start out with a roasted bell pepper and potato soup, followed by a nice yummy roast chicken kafriyal with a confetti rice. And of course, to end this meal, a delectable chocolate zucchotto. So let's start with my roasted bell pepper and potato soup. I always have some potatoes boiled and kept in the fridge because they're really versatile and I can use them in a hurry when I want to cook really fast. So I have here some boiled potatoes. I'm going to get myself a pan. I need some, some garlic. If they're small, I'm going to use three. Just quickly put your weight on it like that. This is really an amazing soup to make. I've got a little bit of chopped onions. As I always say, butter and potatoes are a match made in heaven. So for this, I'm going to use butter. I'm just going to put in some butter. The garlic goes in. Wait till you get a slight waft of roasted garlic and in go some sliced onions. So sweat these onions just a little bit and as that is sweating I'm just going to roughly chop this up and in they go. I'm going to put in a little bit of water. I'm going to use the quick fix method of making a stock which is a nice little stock cube and I'm just going to leave that to ponder for a while. Now I have here a nice plump red bell pepper. I'm going to use wooden skewers. So I'm going to push this into my bell pepper for effect and it gives it a nice mellow flavor and totally tames down all the arrogance of the bell pepper. So my roasted pepper is almost done. Quickly take this, put it in a napkin, cover it, make it nice and cozy. I'm doing this because the bell pepper then sweats and the skin comes out really easily. Let me just check on my soup, bubbling over here. The potatoes, a nice, lovely, strong flavor here of the garlic and the potatoes and the butter all blended well together. I'm now going to very, very easily, and just watch how it's done, use the same napkin to peel away that roasted skin. And of course, I have a lovely, moist, pliant bell pepper with a nice smoky flavor inside. Well, you may be in a hurry, but there are certain things that I would do at least, any which way. So, get rid of all the seeds and just Roughly chop that up and toss it in. Well, it's going to give the soup a lovely, rich, reddish, orange colour. It's done. I don't need to cook it anymore because I started off with boiled potatoes. I'm just going to put this into a blender and mash it all up to make it a nice thick broth. So here we have it. Just going to check if it's done. So I'm going to use the same pan and just pour this lovely puree soup into my pan. Now that's already hot, so I'm just going to add a little bit of milk into this. Lovely, lovely comfort food here. I have some cream that I'm going to add here. About, say, three tablespoons. 
blob of butter just for effect and that goes and you can see the butter melting up and blending with that cream pure indulgence and to finish it off just a little bit of powdered nutmeg now while this is cooking I'm gonna make myself some nice cheese croutons so I have two pieces of bread I'm just gonna put this bread into my grill which I've already heated up toasted ever so slightly I'm not gonna make regular croutons I'm gonna create a little bit of parmesan on it to give it a special zinc well, let's just plate this soup while we're waiting the consistency is that it should be able to fall off just like this and just pour that lovely lovely pieces of bell peppers inside into my plate I need just a little bit of cream here to make a little bit of a design my toast is just about done so I'm gonna get that out of my oven nice golden pieces here and I'm just going to grate a little bit of parmesan onto this you can use any other cheese that you have any processed cheese or a cheddar preferably not a mozzarella because it's too stringy so any hard cheese just about a minute I like to use parmesan because it nicely coats the bread without totally dripping and overpowering it so I'm going to use another very handy person in the kitchen my pair of scissors and quickly just cut this into cheese croutons just stumble a couple of croutons all over well here it is my roasted bell pepper and potato soup with parmesan croutons ready in a jiffy and absolutely tasty as I'm going to do right now this is so good the bell peppers are roasted nicely and they formed specks all over the soup yet elegant enough to present at any party if you want your work friends over or your family and friends over And now it's time to get down to my delectably sinful dessert, my chocolate zucchotto. So I'm going to start out with a piece of sponge cake here. I have some chocolate sponge cake. I'm using the thicker lower base to actually form the base of the zucchotto. The zucchotto is an Italian dessert which is dome shaped, normally filled with pastry cream and lined with cake. Today I'm going to take the shortcut and fill it with some ice cream. This is going to form the base as I said, so I'm just going to take an approximate here. Very simple. I'm saving all this cake. Don't throw it away. You can make some really nice rum balls with it later. Keep this aside. And now I'm just going to cut not too thin, but not too thick either. Really pliable kind of slices. Some of them will be smaller and some of them slightly longer. This is a great dish that you can prepare and a superb alternative to a normal cake. I like to make this instead because it doubles up as a dessert as well as a cake. So it's really simple. I'm going to start like this. Preferably give it a little bit of a pattern so they kind of slightly overlap with the previous one. You can use shorter pieces here as you go along and longer if you require. Make sure that they overlap because the ice cream is going to be filled inside and you don't want any of it to come out. I'm going to just press this down just a little bit, make sure that there are no gaps and just trim off all the extra sponge cake. So I'm going to make a little space here for my ice cream I don't want to eat just cake but before that I want to 
add some nice flavors to this. So I have here a cup of amaretto. Oh, this is, this is absolutely divine. The flavor of this. I'm gonna put about three teaspoons and about three teaspoons. I'm using a very fine cognac, but you can use whatever brandy that you have. Three teaspoons of that. And just, I'll use my fingers, just nicely sprinkle that into the sponge. It moistens the sponge out and allows it to have a nice shape. So I can press this down and I'll press this to the side so that I can put loads of ice cream inside. Well, I'm gonna leave this for some time to soak up the goodness of the amaretto and the brandy because I'm gonna soak up into that later and get some nice vanilla ice cream out of my fridge. You can use whatever ice cream you like. I prefer to use vanilla because I'm gonna give it a nice black foresty kind of a taste. Mash this up just a little bit. You can put in whatever you want. I'm just gonna put in some nice cherries. Mix that up. A little bit, not a little bit actually, this entire cup of chocolate chips. So this entire cup of chocolate chips goes in. It's kind of mixed up nicely. It's not too squishy squashy, which is good for me. It'll take less time to set. I'm just gonna now put this into this ever accepting cake mixture. Just dump in as much ice cream mixture as you possibly can. Press it down. Now very simply, all I need to do is just put this on top and I'm just gonna press this down. Maybe use just a little more amaretto and brandy just to the edges here to kind of seal this in. Don't make the base too soggy because it's going to have to hold up the entire zucotto. So just at the edges here. All right. And I'm just going to quickly cover this and keep it in the freezer. All that's left to do now is to pop this into your fridge and it's going to be ready before your guests come home. We're now going to make an amazing main course the roast chicken kafriyal with confetti rice. I have here a chicken, breast and leg. I have deboned it and removed the bones because I want it to cook really fast. The kafriyal traditionally is made with a breast and a leg or a whole chicken with the bone. The predominant flavor here is peppercorns. So I'm gonna put in about one and a half tablespoon there of peppercorn. And of course, a lot of garlic, so about one, two, three, four, five, six for effect. Clove of garlic. Two nice green chilies. About an inch of cinnamon. And about four cloves. Just a little bit of green coriander. Now this is optional. Very, very little, just to give it a little bit of color. Now just a little bit of water there, not too much, to kind of moisten it up a bit. That's about done. And yeah, I like it a little bit crumbly there. Just gonna put that all over my chicken. I'm gonna put just a little bit of ginger garlic paste in this, about a teaspoon. Some salt. Just a teeny bit vegetable oil. Now, if you're gonna do this on a barbecue, and it's a great dish to do on a barbecue, then you need to reduce the coriander just a little bit. This. I would recommend you do marinate it and keep it about a day or two in advance because then the flavor really penetrates into the chicken. Another marriage made in heaven is chicken and lime. And especially in the kafriyal, we have lots and lots of lime in it. My mouth is watering just thinking about it. Absolutely delightful. So all I need to do is now just poke this one hand, just one side. Notice I've kept the skin on. For any kind of roast, the reason you keep the skin on is to keep the meat moist inside, because otherwise chicken tends to dry out really fast. So I'll leave that for just a little bit to marinate, and I'm gonna get on with my rice. I'm gonna put some water here for boiling. 
And while I leave that to boil, we're gonna get down to our chicken. A pan here on the fire, vegetable oil. You gotta wait for the oil to get really, really hot. And I can feel the heat right now. So I'm just gonna quickly, in that goes. Skin side first. Chicken kafriyal normally doesn't have a sauce. So I'm gonna put this marinade a little later. Let this get a good brown color. So I've got it nice and brown on one side. Turn it over to the other there. In the meantime, my water's boiling here, so let's just put the rice in. You can make any accompaniment. I'm using rice today. This is almost done. What I'm gonna do now is just put this marinade inside. I'm not gonna make it into a sauce. I'm just gonna coat this ever so lightly, so that I can dip my chicken into that. And the great thing about chicken is that it just does not take time to cook. And my rice is done. Now I'm just gonna make it into a very welcoming, colorful confetti rice. As you can see, I have some peas here. I have some corn. I've got a red bell pepper, which I'm just gonna cut into cubes. And of course, some nice mushroom. We're gonna keep them all pretty much the same size. Just very nice, bigger bits of green coriander. A little bit of olive oil, again, you can use vegetable oil if you like. Put in your vegetables. You can just toss the whole thing in. And I know that most of you love good food. So, if you only knew that such great food required so little effort, I'm sure all of you would be in the kitchen. Just a few peas here. I'm gonna toss that around for a little while. Put just a little bit of salt. And of course some crushed pepper. You don't have to fry it too much, just sweat it a little bit. Toss in that rice. Now, since it's long grain rice, it's a good idea not to put your spoon in again and again. So, if you can, and even if you can't, just give it a try. Just toss it around like that, so that the vegetables nicely cover the rice. I'm just gonna put just a wee bit of olive oil on top. All nicely mixed up into the rice. So, my last ingredient, some fresh coriander. Lovely confetti rice there in the center. These nice, tender, juicy pieces of chicken, which you just place nicely all around. And a little of this sauce, fresh coriander right there. And maybe a wedge of lime at the side would be really, really amazing. So this is it, my roast chicken caprial with confetti rice. Totally, totally yummy. Mmm. The predominant flavor here is the lime, the green chilies and the peppercorns. An amazing dish you can prepare for family and friends alike. Now all that's left is my sinfully decadent and totally delightful chocolate zucotto. Oh. So I'm gonna go over there to my fridge and see if it's set. Well now I can see that it has set. I'm just gonna warm it up a little bit because I have to demold this onto a plate. Nervous here. All right. And there it is. A lovely, yummy chocolate zucotto. I'm just going to make 
this look a little more presentable. I have here a little bit of powdered sugar that I'm gonna very, very gently drizzle all over. And a little bit of cocoa powder. And now, of course, some nice red cherries there. Chocolate zucotto. Absolutely delightful to make as well as to eat. Well, I'm just gonna dive into this right now. Lovely, yummy piece of zucotto. It has some cherries and some chocolate chips and of course a whole load of ice cream. I could actually put this whole thing in my mouth, but I'm gonna use the spoon. Mmm. Absolutely delightful. I'm seeing the world move around in slow motion right now. Today, we have worked out a really great menu. We started out with our roasted bell pepper and potato soup, followed by the nice, easy roast chicken kafrial with the confetti rice, and I've finished off with the grand finale, this delightfully decadent chocolate zucotto. I'm gonna run out of here now, but join me for some more great, easy, exotic, yet really simple recipes on the run.